feeling a bit limp over here. Well, there's a little blue pill, I think. Yeah. Oh, don't, you can't say that because you're not on the microphone, so. Oh, okay. If you're going to say things as witty as that, you've got to be recorded. Best joke I will ever say. <laughs> Nobody heard it. <laughs> All of that, no one caught any of that. Exactly. It was so great. So yeah. great. Alright, um, it reminds you of that, have you seen that, um... Simpsons where he's like, bucking up the wrong bush. <laughs> yeah. It's like his brain says to him, there you go, Homer. The cleverest thing you'll ever say and nobody heard it. No! Uh, I haven't watched The Simpsons in years. I haven't either. But apparently... It's still going. It's, yeah, it's still going. It's still making it. Yep. Still cranking that bitch out. I do love The Simpsons. Would you? When is it on? I don't. I think it's on Disney Plus. Yeah, I have Disney Plus. Okay. Should we'll I, sit down and watch some Simpsons after this. Okay. Anytime what, I've seen The Simpsons discussed in any kinds of like Reddit post or something, it's basically just Peak Simpsons was seasons three through through six, and ever since then it's all gone to crap. It's just people will find anything to bitch about, even the basically. things that we all like, we can still bitch about them. Oh yeah. That's life. That is I'm life. I'm feeling unsettled with my microphone today. Okay. Do you know how I can feel settled How's with your it? face? It's here. Um, is, can you see it? Am I in the frame? It's in there. I'm like, trying to avoid looking at it. You, well, you did something very rude today when you turned up. Oh, yeah, I know. And you've been planning it for, for a whole week, I bet. No, for the whole drive. <laughs> the whole drive. I was thinking, I'm going to ask him how's his face. And yeah. then I'm going to ask you what happened to his face. <laughs> oh, wait, no. <laughs> So uh, I caught you just over the fence, and as soon as you said, saw me, you went, "What happened to your face?" Um, I said, "No, that's just your face." Uh, so I had the septoplasty and turbinoplasty, right? Um, so it's fixing a deviated septum, right? And then it's reducing the size of one of my turbinates. And actually, they went on the other side and thought we could have a little pluck of that. Got some big old turbinates on my. Is that um, right? Yeah. Do you know what a turbinate is? I know. I don't want them. You got them. Okay. We've Maybe. all got them. They're like the valves on the sides of your nose that sort of... Okay. Mum, Maybe I do want them, then they probably have yeah, a very mine important were a bit, purpose. Mine were a bit big. Okay. Pretty normal for me. <laughs> Oversized. Big old turbinates. Big old turbinates. So, 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 how are you, Mark? How's life treating you? Are you okay? Well, I didn't have any... Is it major surgery, minor surgery? Oh, very minor. minor. I, I was over in, in hospital overnight. It is a strange buzz when you walk... Because I walked into the... Um, the, the operating theatre yeah. and I kind of felt yeah. like Norm from Cheers not because I go back all the time but they they're like hey yeah. Tony because <laughs> there is that kind of buzz they go because the, the, the surgeon comes in and then the anaesthetist comes in yeah. and they have a chat to you and go we, by the way you do know that we're about to mess yeah. with your shit and you're like yeah I know you're going to mess with my shit and then yeah. the anaesthetist comes in and is like you know I'm going to knock you out and fingers crossed <laughs> we just push it far enough to not to kill you and you're like yeah okay I guess yeah. so but then they then the nurse like comes and gets you and walks you into there because I can walk in there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with my legs or anything and they're just and they're like everyone this is Tony hey <laughs> Tony yeah. hey dude are you from that podcast nobody yeah. said that <laughs> <laughs> nobody said that and then yeah you go on the table you're looking up and then someone gets this sort of IV type thing in your in your arm and then you're like, by the way, there's already an anesthetic going in. And then I had that thought going, oh, this is not going to impact me. I'm going to be awake for ages. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had uh, just sat there going, I'm going to fight it. And then there was a nice Filipino man that looked quite angelic. <laughs> under, hey, under the lights, under a halo. The light, a little halo around yeah. him. And that was the last thing I saw. And then I woke up to a, a lovely nurse offering me an ice block. Nice. After the surgery, and then I was high on the on the joys of general anaesthetic, and yeah. I was I went on a rant about ice blocks, man. They're just nice. what's not to like. They're they're cool. They're refreshing. They're sweet. Why can't everything in life be this good? Ice blocks. My yeah. kids love them. I love a bloody ice block. Exactly. I'd have an ice block right now, but instead I'm going to have a beer. A beer with you, Mark, because that's what we do on this podcast called Two Cents. Gets distracted. Yeah. It's a rugby podcast. We very rarely say the name. This so is it's, true. It's if you thing. want to search it on any of the podcasting platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, <sighs> Google Podcasts, yeah, for when, now, it's still gone. It, I don't it, know. It's still gone. So we're holding it up. We're holding it up. Yeah. If we went around, they would have already We've collapsed. Probably the entirety of Google would have Basically, gone down yeah. the traps. We will talk some rugby. We will. Well, there wasn't a huge amount of rugby to talk about. So There were some URC games on. Super Rugby's not quite here yet. Six Nations took a break. 
Yeah. And we ask some questions to people. This is what we do when there's not much on. We 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 go to the bank. We say, people, we are nothing without you. We need your questions. And and by God. We got heart heaps. We got a ton. So yeah. I went to Reddit and asked if anyone had any questions for you. And then parentheses me. Yeah. Um, and I did the same with a YouTube post, a community post. The old compost. <clears throat> When I say that, I don't mean things you put in your back garden that rot away that you can then use as fertilizer. Compost is great for the garden. Get Hell yourself great. some compost. Get yourself some. You're a compost bin? No. I tend to bury my food scraps directly into the garden because I don't plant on them straight away. With all the I rest. let them do their thing. With the dead bodies. I was doing Bukashi composting for a while. You're doing what? The Bukashi. Buka- Bukashi? Bukashi. Isn't that a porn thing? No, it's not. Where there's like one girl and a lot of guys. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> It's a, kind, bukaki. it's a kind of Japanese <laughs> composting. Buka- it is Japanese. So Bukashi and Bukaki have... <laughs> I think they both start with a B and they're both from Japan. And they sound similar. Well, I, I guess so. Do not go to... Don't admit if you're really... <laughs> you're really this into, one's going on my channel. <laughs> so <laughs> let's keep this PG. You, you're like really into like compost and you're like, it's your passion. You just love how great composting you're like, is. Well, what's that thing that guy and said? You, it was like... Bukaki composting? Yeah, exactly. You go, ah, you go, you travel, nice. you're like, Bukashi composting is the biggest thing and you travel to Japan and then you just get the spelling wrong on the day and you go to the Bukaki uh, conference, not the Bukashi. This has started in a really <laughs> tangent of all tangents. <laughs> Can we do a role play? Of no! The- <laughs> Can't do a freaking role play. Okay, so questions. We've got, we've got, questions. we've got some questions about rugby, the sport that we love. Yes. We're Is it all about rugby? rugby uh, mostly. Okay, cool. Anything right. absurd? I like the absurd questions. Too. Oh, some people, a few people asked, "How's your face?" Face is doing good. So basically, all last week, I kind of felt like I had a. I still kind of feel like I got a bit of a block nose. Mm. And last week, I felt like I had real block nose. A lot of blood was coming out. But then I also felt like I had a real bad head cold, and I was about six beers deep. Right. So you know when you're about six beers deep and you feel sick, you're just a bit. Oh God, I don't want to be here. Right. Like so, it just felt a little bit like that, but it was it was manageable. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. What a pain. Thank right. you to all the people who showed concern for Tony's well-being. Thank you. I think I texted you. You did. How's your later. face? Was what you said. Is I that think. really what I said? I can't remember. Okay. I have my phone, but I'm something bored. creative. All right, so we've got a bunch of questions. We're going to do our best to answer them. Yes. You will probably give better answers than I will give. Well, you never know. I might really knock some of these out of the park. Exactly. Let's. let's I got a few kind of quick fire ones to start with, and then we'll get to the kind of nitty gritty. You're real good. Solving all of rugby's problems. We'll go. We'll go balls deep soon. Exactly. Uh, right. The first one is from Nuck Chorus. Stop you. Oh, this, wow, that's this, distracted this, early. <laughs> but boom, oh, we need like a little ding for this when he gets is, distracted. It's quite a clammy evening. We started talking about rugby and then he's like, nah, the hell with this. It's quite I'm going to talk about my shirt. It's quite a clammy evening and this is quite a thick knit. Would you like to feel it? I'm all right. Do you want to go change? <laughs> I, no, I, want, I feel it's... You changed it's, into this shirt Yeah, because well, I was wearing my was. cyber bully shirt. And, mm, okay, go back to the questions. Feel, um, just feel the knit. Nuck Chorus. Nuck... <laughs> Asks Nuck Charis. Nuck Charis. I love it. Thank 68 you. as well. Oh, okay. uh, one, one number off. Asks for the way too early predictions for the winners of Super Rugby. Uh, uh, you'd have to say Crusaders, just. I'll uh, say Blues because I'm a sucker. Uh, yeah. URC. Uh, I am going to go back to back with Munster. I'm going to say Leinster. I think it's their year to get it done. Come on, Munster. Uh, the top 14. That's um, it. Is, I don't watch the top 14 enough to really know. La Rochelle. Racing 92. And uh, the Premiership in England. So I will say Saracens. I want, I want to say Wasps. <laughs> oh, that would be um, great. I really have no idea, uh, but I like the Harlequins. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Frodo Modge 94 says, yes. does Two Cents still love the Stormers? I think that's a reference to my son with his love of everything Stormers Rugby. It's an odd team to sort of attach yourself to. I think it's just because it's a pretty cool name. The Stormers. Stormers. Really? He still likes the Stormers. I was watching the Stormers play the Sharks the other day and he came up to me. He was like, Dad, who's playing? And I was like, Stormers and the Sharks, son. He's you like, know, who's winning? I said, you know, the Stormers. And he you, was like, yes. You know what would be a great name for a team to really capture that boy three to seven year old market? The like mega laser tank brigade 64. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that or just the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to go. Yeah. Well, there was a, like in the NBA, wasn't there like the Raptors for a yeah, while? Yeah, there were the Raptors. Yeah, but just like dinos. Okay, like the yeah. three-year-old boy market. That's the dinosaurs. Yeah, well, if you get them young, exactly. Fan for life. Get them involved. Um, has Tony? This comes from Ringo Twenty Six, who I believe goes yeah. under the uh, the YouTube name of Rian, Rian Low. Not Lou. Not Lou. Not Lou. Low. Our favorite. Has Tony's guitar playing ever got him laid? Has my guitar playing ever got me laid? Just in the way where someone's been like, someone, uh, some lady <laughs> has been like, stop, stop, stop. I'll fuck you if you stop. <laughs> You're going to have to bleep that if. Oh, that's one. That's one. Here's the one. For you when you get a later, thing, Tony. Because we wanted to one. get this one out quick. We were like, okay, no swearing. <laughs> yeah, no swearing. Uh, no, but it does help in terms of like, uh, like you, you start playing, even you're tinkering around back in the day, like it's whatever girls like a guy with a right. guitar. It does, does help a little bit. But my big problem is, um, as soon as I've had a few drinks, so if I'm quite drunk, I'm terrible at guitar. Right. So oftentimes if it's at a party and I'm, I'm hammered, I'm like, I pick it up and I'm just like, I can't play anything and, it, and it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's terrible. I may have told this story before, but I used to work at a university in China. Keep saying that story. I'm going to get some tissues. And the university in China is largely made up of Chinese people, funnily enough. Really? But the campus had a group of about five to ten foreign teachers, generally teaching language. I was yeah. teaching English over there, but my neighbor was a French teacher, and he was from France, funnily enough. Funny that. He would play his guitar, not in his room, not like somewhere private. He would just go downstairs where he knows a lot of the students would mill about, and just sit there playing his guitar. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. like a French dude playing guitar. He used to have mobs of uh, female students. Of the just, ladies. Yeah, and uh, I believe I would see a fair bit of um, coming and go because our doors were right next to each other. I would uh, see a fair bit of foot traffic. Were you able to get a bit of like? I, he never spoke to me at all. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he just refused to speak English, and I didn't speak French. Fair enough. He's French. Yeah, right. he speak French. You told me the French are rude. He was. Rude. He was rude. There was another French guy, Antoine. I don't remember the rude guy's name, but Antoine was lovely. He was the other French guy on campus. He, he, they, they didn't like each other. The two French guys hated each other. But he, he wasn't a pussy man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not bad having a mate who's like a yeah an absolute Saturnist twenty seven. Perhaps a collab with the Egg Chasers. Tim from Egg Chasers. Maybe one of these days. Tim's stuff is genuinely pretty good. I um, watched a little bit of it through the World Cup. When did you World Cup? He was always at the stadiums. It was yeah, great yeah, no, and, think he, and he would sometimes go talk to people. Yeah, and I like that stuff when he was in a real um, with the fans and stuff outside yeah. bars, having some. And I saw him sculling a couple of pints, a bit of fun, a bit doing. of a laugh, and yeah, he was good. He he, he gives proper analysis of rugby, yeah. which is usually where I go. Have we? What? Doesn't have a whiteboard, which have you know. But, oh well, we can't be perfect. Can't have it all, mate. Can't have it can't all. Have it all. Um, now, some of these questions get a little bit deeper, but uh -huh. this one's still pretty, pretty quick fire answerable from mm. CDF Triple Eight. Oh, CDF Triple Eight, eh? What's the best atmosphere you've been part of to watch a game? It doesn't necessarily say at a stadium. My first thoughts go to at a stadium, but you know, best kind of atmosphere you've been at watching a game. First 15 games are pretty amazing mm -hmm. when you're at school. Yeah. Um, New Zealand first 15 rugby is massive sometimes. Like the Rosemary Westlake clashes, they were pretty big. Gets bigger crowds than might have <coughs> than NPC it's games. Being at only what only what main pretty much packed out, um, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely high the, like there's I've been to growing up as a little one like uh, at a little one uh, a couple of the um, Battle of the Bridges at Oniwa mm. Domain were man I love Oniwa Domain that's yeah. a spiritual home for me um, it's a real real neighborhood park it's just a grass yeah. bowl basically yeah. with a pitch in the middle standing room only like mm -hmm. fit, when it fits 12,000 people and it feels like there's freaking 100,000 people yeah, there yeah whereas there's 10,000 people at North Harbour Stadium and it feels like it feels like it's cavernous yeah yeah um but beyond that sort of there was a great game I went to I went to the first time the Blues lost to the Crusaders oh. I went to the first Crusaders champion when that little winger scored the try right at the end 
when there was like a drop ball by mm. Kashmir or something got kicked through and their little Fijian or Samoan winger just got it down and they won it in the last game. That was that was pretty epic. Um, I, I, at all black level, um, I haven't really... All the games that I've been to, we've, we've kind of just won. Okay. You know, they're like they're, it's excitement beforehand, the, the haka yeah. and all that sort of stuff, but we've just kind of gone... Duh, duh, duh. Mm. I've never been to a classic All Blacks game where okay. we've just pulled out of the fire. First time I went to an All Blacks game was against the Aussies. That was pretty spine tingling just to see the Hucker in person yeah, yeah, for the yeah, first yeah. time. That's always pretty memorable. Uh, I went to the opening game of the Rugby World Cup 2011 against Tonga. That was a yeah, electric. yeah, that was huge. That I went was to that massive. Too. The, the, the the opening ceremony was great. Yeah, um, and then I also went to the France game where we played them, not the final, but the. the I pool went game. to that game too. Oh, nice. Yeah, didn't say hello. Yeah. <laughs> you prick. I know. I was like, I avoided you. <clears throat> didn't know who you were, but I avoided you. Um, can I say something unfortunate though? Okay. Best atmosphere I've been to at a rugby rugby fixture in uh, New Zealand was not. New Zealand playing? Well, no, it wasn't a union game. Oh, it's league. Uh, the 2008, 2009 uh, Warriors had made, just scraped through to the finals, won the first round of the, the finals. We got a home final second round and we played the Roosters and mm -hmm. we won that game and it was just... Buzzing? Absolutely on fire. Mm. Absolutely on fire. The place was nuts. Yeah, Lo uh, League fans go, go for it. Yeah. Go. Rugby yeah. union fans in New Zealand are a bit more reserved. Yeah, can be. But no. That was probably the best atmosphere I've been I in. I also went to the Ireland-Australia game from the 2011 pool stages at Eden Park as well. The Irish fans were pretty raucous. And I was with a Wallabies fan as well. Ah, uh, yeah. I watched that one on the He on was the pretty box. heartbroken. And he was... Yeah, it's the one you talk about where he, he was upset why we, don't, why we give the Aussies so much grief. Yeah, exactly. Um, from Abraham Tomahawk. Oh, Abraham Toms. What are your thoughts on the recent surge in online abuse of refs? A surge? I think, uh, I think abuse of refs has kind of always been there, but yeah. social media has just given it an outlet. It just used to be at the pub or on Talkback Radio, <laughs> yeah. and now it's just online. I, look, I don't think it's ever acceptable to abuse anybody for any reason whatsoever, mm. but I think you absolutely, as a referee, need to live in the world that exists rather than the world we wish it to mm. be. Um, I personally am not going to go online and abuse a ref or anything like that. Yep. But I do think that referees still um, are able to be criticized for calls. Like mm -hmm. that call was wrong, yada, yada, yada. But unfortunately, um, you're dealing with a bunch of rabid fans who are completely one-eyed. Mm. Um, and there are always going to be pricks. There, yeah. are, You know how you, you say, oh, I love Irish people, but I've never, oh, there are, we, we have our, we, and an Irish person, but, oh, we have our pricks. And mm. you're like, well, everyone does. Yeah. You know, like there's always going to be assholes who take it too far, but like attacking people's families. Yeah, attacking that, that, people that stuff, that. that is genuinely new. Like you never heard people calling up Talkback Radio go, oh, geez, I hope his kid yeah, gets cancer or something. I've never, but it's not been, I don't think it's unique to rugby union. No. I think it's Every a sport I think has, it's across I think yeah. it's a humanity issue. It's just what humans do mm. that we especially the online anonymity. Did I say that right? Anonymity. Anonymity. Um, I think I got that. Um, just gives people you know, they've had a couple of drinks, they're in a rage. It's no excuse though. Yeah. And they say some pretty ghastly, awful shit. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and they don't actually realise that there's a person at the yeah, other right. end going, Oh, can I give you a, it's not That's, really related, but it's slightly related. It's in my recent kind of consciousness. It's kind of a plug, but <laughs> I was talking to you about it earlier. I didn't tell you a specific example, but my other channel. What is it called? Two Cents on Tour. <laughs> like all the videos there don't get a lot of engagement, but I like doing it. It's kind of like my little hobby, right? But the yeah. recent video I put out. I had kind of a bad day. It was called Why I Hate China, wasn't it? Well, it's called The Worst Trip I Had in China. <clears throat> like Everything I did on that day just failed. Like, every place I went to was closed. I spent hours. It was hot. I still... I wasn't totally miserable. I finished the day having a beer. I think, oh, well, it wasn't the best day. Yeah. Right? But people have just seen that title. And I'm getting comments just like, you have a stupid face. <laughs> as soon as I saw your face, I knew you were stupid. I was just like, I thought the same thing. Exactly. Mark. Go back to America, you prick, if you don't like it. Just like, I think you should go back to America, you prick. People who don't even watch the video. But I guess that's the thing. You would have had it as well. As soon well, as you put a video out there, you're no, opening the door for abuse. And I guess, 100%. sadly, if you're, in a, if you're a referee, you go into that knowing... You're opening the door for abuse. Is yeah, it acceptable? Yeah, yeah. No. Is it going to happen? Yes. Yeah, and some of them, like, I generally don't 
get too worked up. But there are a couple of comments sometimes, and you're like, "That's just me." Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're like, I had to look in the like yeah. hidden comments yeah, for some yeah, of them. I was like, "Oh, stupid face." <laughs> Because if anything, all my life, because I wear glasses, people have been like, you're, you're an A plus student. And I'm like, I'm oh. getting B's. I'm, getting, I'm a solid B, B plus guy. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have a stupid face. Exactly. My face is deceptively smart. Yeah, when sometimes you get comments like, I bet this person um, is the least loved member of his family. And you're like, oh, too close, <laughs> too close to home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you are, you, there are real people at the end of the day, and yeah. you know. But then you kind of, I just try and read it and be like, separate it from. It's just some dick yeah. who doesn't know that I'm a real person, just yeah. can't make that quite connection. Shouting so why should I make the connection yeah. back to him? So exactly, yeah, I try and laugh them off. But yeah, these guys get hate on abuse. That oh, no, 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 that we can, we can, but we only have the tiniest taste of it. But I don't think it's going to go anywhere, man. People, no. people are passionate about the sport. There, and people, are, you, when you watch a game, no matter who you are, you genuinely have a, an invisible bias towards yeah. the cause, towards your team. You yeah. do. You just do. I would say, like, it sucks. But if you were looking to go into refereeing at any kind of top level, I would just say, don't have social media open to like public engagement. Yeah. You need to either don't have it or just keep it private. Richie McCaw when he was an All Black, never had any social media accounts. He opened yeah. a few since he retired, but he did that very deliberately and I think smart. Yeah, absolutely. You're just well, not just, giving that just door don't open for people. Just refuse to read the comments. Yeah, or basically. Like, I'm not. I don't ever go to the comments. You know, I do Team of the Week videos. I, I just there. don't read the comments yeah. because people just get pissed off. Yeah, because, yeah, I found that when I... I haven't done them for a while, but when I would do um, those... the greatest f- oh, yeah. first 15 of all time people get mad at you people you'd be like, like reddit chose this and they'd be like screw you yeah you yeah 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 but i would play into it i'd be like yeah. if you if you disagree with this you think i'm an absolute munter tell me below yeah, but true. it's not up to me you idiot just do it and true. then they're like i'll tell them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then it's, yeah feeds the beast a little bit patty 1011 what's your opinion on a patty? six nations winner versus rugby championship winner uh, where's the time in the calendar for that one is my first question yeah and where's the, uh, it doesn't because f- the competitions are played at different times yeah comp- if, yeah. if you play it at the end of the Six Nations the other team hasn't even started playing I yet I think you'd get a similar kind of game to <clears throat> well there, there'd be international test match unless it became like this big prestigious thing mm. that had years of history behind yeah. it obviously it's not going to have that it could become like a training development squad gets yeah. sent from the That's other the country thing. basically to yep. win the yep. the uh toyota cup yeah the emirates <laughs> Cup. Yeah. yeah i like yeah. the idea but yeah. i don't if it was like a fully fledged thing and everybody was into it and yeah. it had some the calendar i think needs to get right before that can happen the same they've also asked um what about the domestic league like uh super rugby versus like champions cup winner kind of thing again it's we just saw munster play the crusaders and again it's like crusaders just sent they the sent B the, the B team over and it wasn't much. Even though it got really great, there was clearly a lot of attendance and viewers and whatnot. That's that's cool, but it's yeah, just it aligning the teams to be in the same place at the same time. Is and tough. Munster didn't even have their own stuff. Yeah, though, exactly. Man. So um, I like the it in theory. I just don't think it ever really plays out well. Mm. You know, and Hard to organize. The idea is always the easy part. It's the implementation, which yeah. is kind of hard. This professional environment we're in. Lanson and 15. Maybe you've talked about it before, but have either of you watched rugby in any stadiums outside New Zealand? And what did you think of it? If you did, I've watched one game outside New Zealand. I watched the Waratahs take on the Blues at Allianz Park before they knocked it down. Oh. And it was all right. It was very similar vibes to New Zealand because it was a big stadium. It wasn't really full. My angry Australian mate was just screaming at the Waratahs and they overpaid. And that they need to make an F and tackle. I have never watched a rugby game at another stadium, but I have watched sport at stadiums that rugby is played at. Mm-hmm. I watched um, two AFL games, one at the, one of the MCG, which is a terrible game place to watch rugby union. Yes, very far from the pitch. And it was, even at that stadium, because it's so big, I remember I was 15 at the time and there were 40,000 people in there. And it was like, they were like, not a great crowd today. Right. 40,000 people. Damn, son. Mm. Um, and then I went to another AFL game probably in 2010. Okay. Eddie had. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I've seen an AFL game at the MCG Yeah. when I was 10 and I was bored stiff because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. A 10-year-old, you're too young. Yeah. 10-year-old, you just want to go home and play video games. 
No, I was just it was it's exciting to be in the in the atmosphere, and they kind of they did it well. They like you got to go onto the pitch and kick some goals afterwards. Mm, that's you cool. know it was kind of fun. What I didn't realize is that my grandparents had taken me along to the pre like the the like the, the, the warm up yeah the curtain raiser. Ah, uh, so you were set through. I the sat through the entire curtain. I was like, thank God this is over. Like, no, that's just the curtain raiser. The real game's about to start. <laughs> the real game was a lot more engaging because I was so bored through the curtain raiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I was kind of I'd had enough. <laughs> It's a long. I mean, AFL is not a short game. Yeah, it does go for a wee while. But yeah, it's quite a. It's can be quite spectacular. Yeah, AFL. it's very high energy. But no, I have. It's, it's a big bucket list thing to me. I think there was a question in there about stadiums, wasn't there? They would uh, like to watch games. Yes, I think there was a second part to that question. Where would you like to go to watch a game? Uh, there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot of stadiums. I've always. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to go to Millennium Stadium. Oh yeah. Thought that that would be a real special place to go to watch a game, but like all of them, like Twickers, Murrayfield, Stade de France, Loftus, yeah, Alice Park, mm. Alice Park, um, yeah, they they would be pretty immense. Yeah, I'd love to do that at some stage. One of these days, Tony. One of these days, just gotta just gotta get a few quid. Kalacha says, do you think a tier two Six Nations with the likes of Portugal, Belgium, Romania, etc. would actually benefit rugby as a sport? We kind of have a tier two Six Nations in that they have the European Rugby Championship, but there's a lot of people who ask something similar about them actually being kind of connected because right now they're played as their own separate competitions. Mm. A lot of people asking, oh, do you think there should be kind of promotion relegation? I like a bit of the old one up, one down. I, I do because I find that it's one of the most exciting things about... Um, the bottom of the log becomes exciting. Yeah, English football. Like like those games where like everything's on the line like yeah. these people's careers are on the line the yeah they need four future. points from their next like two games yeah, just yeah, to be yeah. able and to the, stay above the, the fans, drop zone the yeah. fans are just rabid into it and stuff and it just breeds a whole level of excitement and mm. maybe it would be Italy going up and down do, 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 but maybe one year someone else goes down someone else goes down the problem is I think uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Six Nations is owned by one private equity firm and the Six Nations members. So Italy, who's a part owner, is not going to be like, sure, we'll drop out. But then yeah. you'd have to get the other six, like whoever country's in, to become members. And it would, again, the idea is really cool. Yeah. But I think getting it off the ground is going to be tough. And also, I would love Italy it. brings in a ton more money than any of the countries mentioned but those other countries could if the game got like one of the big problems i think with italy short-term thinking yeah anyway. that is, one of the problems with italy italy's a big you know big big country looks like a boot but it's so overwhelmingly swamped with football mm-hmm. that's such a passion that if rugby just never gets it can never get a foothold never get any traction but you could argue the same with all the other countries we just mentioned that portugal well like belgium georgia like georgia is so, the exception there for sure yeah but then and also like if that would breed excitement into we've got up this year or mm. she would want to stay above it yada 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 like if they could just get a little bit more intrigue yeah. in some other countries and yeah give it a bit of a crack because it maybe what's happened in italy wouldn't replicate in other countries mm. like because it is just such an overwhelmingly football country. Mm. I guess yeah, Portugal is an overwhelmingly football country as well, isn't it? I think Ronaldo is from Portugal. He is. Yeah. You got that right. Well done. Yes. Did you Google that on the way here? Who was the other? Was it Figo? Who was the other Portuguese footballer way back in the day? I can't remember. Yeah, I think there was a Figo or something <clears throat> like that. I've been to yeah. Portugal. It's a lovely country. Is it really? It is. Not shaped like a boot. No. It's not, <laughs> it's not shaped like a boot. Mr. Burgess asks, uh-huh. what's your opinion of the four-year cycle that rugby finds itself in now? About 10 years ago, it wasn't really much talked about, and every tournament was kind of matted for its own, and the, was the big one to win. Nowadays, every tournament, oh yeah, every championship, every game over that four-year period is kind of dismissed by a large cohort, uh, basically claiming that the only thing that matters is the Rugby World Cup final. So there's all this build up to the Rugby World Cup, diminish the other tournaments. So a large cohort called South Africans, is it? That's not going to do another trick for me. Um, Yeah, I think it is a... a, To a degree, yeah. It's a problem. Mm. I don't like it. Like, I really love rugby. Mm. And I enjoy the World Cup, and we'll take the World Cup seriously. It is the biggest thing we've got, but I... Used to be like just some test matches when I was a kid, and still now I feel like in the week of the test match, I'm like, this is, this is the pinnacle. This is the best versus the best. Mm. This is 
everything's on the line. We we go out, we settle who is actually the better team. Mm. You know, and that's that's why they call it a test. You're testing yourselves. You're testing the the strength of your nation. It's it's it should be. It's sh- I just don't like treating it as. We've got to give this guy some minutes. Uh, we got to get this. Cup. Yeah, yeah. We've got to get a rotation. We've got to get all mm. this right. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, it is kind of what it's become. We judge coaches based on how well they did at the World Cup, don't we? To a degree. Well, what do you? How do you judge Fozzie then? That was one of the other questions. I think was I how would you judge the Fozzie Sam Kane era? I'm quite fidgety today. Can you repeat that? You, you've, how do you judge the Fozzy Kane era? That was kind of one of the questions as well. I forget. I don't think I wrote that one. You, you're getting all these guys' names? Yeah, I have been so far. Well done. Well done. Thank you for the questions, team. Yeah, the questions are fantastic. They're real crackers. I Cr- printed them off and everything. <laughs> well, Tony didn't. I'm reading off Tony's laptop for Where? the ones on Reddit, but the ones that... I have printed no expense off. spared here, is there? Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, well, how do I judge it? Um, like this four-year cycle thing. Subpar is how I would judge the Fozzy Sam Kane cycle. They're a very good team, mm. and P- Sam Kane's a very good player. I think Fozzy is a very good coach, um, but in terms of the standards that. We, the New Zealand public, expect from the All Blacks. Not quite up there with some of the other world classes, class coaches that are. They didn't. They there. didn't meet the standard. Um, <clears throat> for sure. Which is uh, unfortunate. They like they would I be saying that if they got two extra points in mm. that World Cup final? Maybe not. Maybe mm. because they still lost way more games than we're used to. True. What about this four-year cycle thing? Does it um, diminish? I think. I think it is a a problem. Mm. I think. Um, just focusing on one tournament. Though. I know South Africa, you've won two tournaments in a row, and that's fantastic. Um, but they're not wildly dominant with, between those periods. Like, how many of the, in the last eight years of the, how many, in the, how many? We won pretty much all the tournaments except 2019 and 2015. I'm sure they'd like to win a few of those. Yeah, for sure. You know, like there was one time when I think they had like everything in the trophy cabinet. I think maybe 2019 because they won the rugby championship. They won, uh, maybe not. They weren't even playing rugby in 2019. Oh, no, 2020. 2019 before COVID, yeah. Yeah, right. But, yeah. I feel like the Six Nations is still a very big deal for the Six Nations people, but still the World World Cup looms pretty large. Yeah, it does. It's just all the attention, all the sponsors, all the casuals, Mm. everything Mm. hypes up for it. We go nuts about it. But I, 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 I genuinely like rugby. Yeah, I just, really love watching yeah. a good game. It doesn't rugby. have to be a World Cup. Game. It doesn't have to be in the World Cup. Mm. It, it like it doesn't have to be attached to that particular tournament. Mm. A good Tri Nations game, a good Six Nations game. I love, I love the July internationals. I mm. love the Autumn internationals. It's it's freaking great stuff, mm. you know. And I would love us to be a little bit more connected to it all year, like the, especially internationals, like. Yeah. I think as an All Black fan, you just, they, I don't know, I'm sure test matches are meaningful for everyone, but we know how much they, how meaningful they are when we lose, because mm. it stings so much, you know, because we, we, it's an arrogant thing to say is we're not that used to it, like we have, we've had an incredible winning record, but not winning the World Cup for so long, it became an obsession for mm. the All Blacks, and now I think it's, how do you think New Zealand's now kind of fixing itself in terms of we haven't won the last two tournaments yeah the pressure's starting to build do you again, reckon eh? that we're getting the old monkey back no not yet because we made the final we only just lost the final so and I, I think, think even a weird way that final was a little bit of overachieving for that team yeah exactly <laughs> you know, they weren't we expected going. to do a heck of a lot no. so yeah from J-O-A-O that's a Portuguese J-O-A-O <laughs> Sorry for your pronunciation, buddy. Can you try it again? How? How? Show. Well, what's a, it's, a, it's a common Portuguese name, isn't it? Oh. No, that's not it. <laughs> Why do you think so few Kiwis are aware of European rugby? It's your main sport, and I'm sure football fans over there keep up with the Premier League and Champions League. So why do Kiwis ignore the Six Nations and the Champions Cup? There's literally no rugby being played there, so there's no excuse. I think because it's cricket season. And we don't... Yeah, because we need to switch off for yeah, a little bit. It's, it's and it's also on in the middle of the night. Yeah, the, 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 
The games over here tend to be played at night because it's more palatable for Europe so the broadcasters can make more money. They mm. schedule them for 7 o'clock, which is the morning over in Europe. Yeah. Whereas nobody is scheduling games around the New Zealand kickoff hour. No. So there's a lot of afternoon games which are literally on at 3 in the morning. Yeah. 5 in the morning. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to watch. Like you can watch a highlights package from time to time, and when you do accidentally catch some, you're like, "Oh, this is not too bad." You like you might catch like um, the Heineken Cup final or something mm. like that, or keep a priest of that, or be like, mm. "Gee, Paul Tito doesn't look that bad when he's playing for the Wasps." Mm. Um, I come up with some strange references sometimes. Paul Tito, Marty Holler last week. Exactly. Yeah. Blast uh, from the past. Yeah, um, and it's, but yeah, and also there is a, another reason which won't you won't like. There is a degree of arrogance yeah. as well. It's we were, boring. It sucks. It's <laughs> all being played in the rain. It's good. And also, it's not as good. Yeah. It's just... That's genuinely a thing. They're just one off running off the rocks. Like, the wingers must get pretty cold. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and me personally, I've never said any of those things. Never. No, I'm very respectful. So, um, yeah, and also... As a rugby fan, it is nice to actually just switch you off and be like, Super Rugby's coming up. Mm. You know, like actually get excited. Anything, a lot of New Zealanders complain about the fact that Super Rugby starts at the end of summer. Like, it's too early. We don't want rugby yet. Yeah, we're still, we're still, still on the like, beach. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the guys are playing and they're still sweating buckets kind of thing. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah we're, we're very much accustomed to a rugby on, rugby off. Yeah. Rugby, cricket. Yeah, the, the rugby season throughout my childhood got longer and longer as Super Rugby became a thing. Like, it never used to be played in the summer. We used to have test matches and NPC. That was it. It and wasn't yeah. that much rugby. But when it was on... But when it was NPC, on, it was a big deal. NPC State, it's, Eden Park would be It was like scarcity made it valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was now huge. there's a lot of rugby. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Did you see this? the new Super Rugby advert? No. It wasn't, you know how we've given, when you know we've given it to those. Bit of grief, yeah. There was one of the Sky ones like, Super Rugby, it's lit, get live on Sky. Yeah. Which was, I was like, oh, okay, cool, you're doing it again. Yeah. But then there was another one that was like, had this incredible, um, like, Pacifica song in the background. And it was just the ocean. And all these rugby players were just diving into the ocean, recreating like, um, Rugby scenarios like okay. like I'm tackles and stuff. Square pants in my head. Who lives in a point of one under the sea? SpongeBob. Okay. Um, uh, are you ready, kids? <laughs> Caleb Clark. Yeah, I was just thinking Caleb Clark. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. yeah, but then you realize it's the it's the it's the players right. and they're like passing the balls under the water and stuff and like it looks all kind of avatarish and That's it's quite cool. cool. Okay, yeah, I'll have to yeah, check yeah. That out. yeah. Uh, Selfie Joe, will video refereeing, particularly with respect to tries, ever be foolproof? No. 100% correct. The magic bullet that fans seem to think it is no. a bit of a loaded question. Or will it always just be another tool in the kit of highly qualified but fallible human beings? I think you've yes. answered your own question there. Yes. Um, yeah. But it's never going to be perfect. Are you? Is your thighs quite warm after having I'll that on? I'll flip you. Yeah. I was very keen to get that off my thighs. Hot thighs. The old... Hot Thighs Hot Morgan. Yeah. Hot Thighs Morgan. No, I, I mean, the, the the referees do the best they can with the tools they've got. Yeah. I think... No sport has the, the, the things. There's technology. always going to be calls that you can look at it. Literally, two people could look at the same image and go, that's in or that's out. Yeah, like we all think the Scotland try was, diff was the smartest thing to do was to be a try, but then you look at the rule book and they're like, well... well yeah, technically, no. Technically, Other no. people are just like, no, that wasn't a try. So. Yeah, exactly. And there's always going... It has to. It comes down to a human being making a call about a thing they're looking at on a screen. That's the beauty of the human existence. We all have <laughs> the beauty of the human existence is somebody making a referee call exactly. while looking at a we TV all have, screen. We all have. That is the beauty of the human existence. Exactly right. We Do you all... want to stand by that? Exactly. That is not the beauty of the human existence. We all have different thoughts the and first opinions. moment your child grips your finger after they're born and recognizes that you are someone significant in their life, it pales a good comparison to a referee looking at a screen to make a decision. That's real commitment to rugby. Hey, kids. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy loves you. 
what else are you trying to make another point you're just saying people are fallible basically people okay. have different thoughts and opinions about I think stuff we said fallible a few times in this podcast today we are both very fallible yeah i'm i'm particularly fallible today mr scaphoid do you think the lions tour will be competitive enough uh i bloody well hope so i hope schmitty um does a pretty good job i like the hat by the way it's good yeah not because i'm a trump fan but because i'm a blues fan you want to show where's the thingy it says make the blues great again for anyone who can't see that sorry about gripping your head too hard where's the thingy thingy uh, we're not doing well with our thingies today no where did i put it you had it i did have it i'm talking I... about the thing to open my bottle of beer should i use a 2c chili <laughs> no <laughs> Where did I put it? Where did you put it? This is epic oh, viewing. Okay. So you think Schmidt is going to do a good job? Uh, yeah, I hope so. He's a very good coach. Yeah. And I hope that he absolutely crushes it for them. Not to the point where they... <laughs> beat us in the blitters low. Someone play. else mentioned something like that about, uh, do you think the Aussies are going to get better under Schmidt? I think yes. But think, they're in a pretty low point right now. Yeah. I think people are judging the Wallabies I'm again on that so World Cup looking, performance. I'm so it's, looking forward to watching that documentary go, series. It can't go worse, surely. Yeah. Surely. I'm an optimist. I saw a question uh, in there as so I don't know if you answer, answered it, but it was like, are you going to watch the uh, Chasing the Sun? Oh, yes. That's one of the questions the I got. Uh, are you going to watch Chasing the Sun 2 or is it too soon? I'm absolutely not going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I? You, you might, but like, I don't watch Chasing the Sun 1. That was I, from I, JP I, Felds, by the way. I highlighted that one to answer. Okay, and... Yeah, I didn't watch Chasing the Sun once. It I'm was a, really good. I'm not a South African fan. You don't have to be, though. It was really good. I'm an all black fan. You will love Rossi if you watch that. Me and Rossi, we've got beef, bro. All day, every day. He comes to my house. I'll be like, hey, Rossi, what's up? You You'd have a beer with Rossi. I'd love to. I'd love to sit down. I'd probably, pro- probably get on like a house I on reckon fire. you would. You, me and Russ? Yeah. Get him on the pod. Exactly. Come on, on. You're welcome. Anytime, Russ. Um... No, I, I, why would I want to watch that? Like, I am not. It's just really good production values and really insightful. And and why the hell the is it called ca- Chasing the Sun? It's not in Japan. Chasing a baguette. I guess it's like Chasing Your Dream. I don't know. No, well, Chasing the Sun made sense. Yeah, it's Chasing the Dream, Chasing the Sun, the Land of the Rising Sun. The thing was in Japan. Okay. Oh, is that what that was? Holy crap. Are you serious? I didn't get it. I'm real thick with that kind of stuff. You know, Jesus. when I was like 12, I what? realized that like the United States Are of America. Are you, Am- no, you not, serious? When I was 12. No, no, you're not, honestly, no I'm not asking no, about that. No, as I'm, a 40 year old, I had no idea. No, I'm not asking about that. But are you serious? You didn't make that connection no, to Chasing the, the Sun? No. Land of the Rising Sun. Didn't make the connection. So why is it called Chasing the Sun 2 when it's in France? It should be like. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, I guess because Chasing the Sun 1 was successful. But Chasing a baguette would be. Not quite it's as not quite as catchy. Not quite as like aspirational. Oh, that's, really, that's a really clever marker. That's a good title. Chasing the sun. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's in Japan. That makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm shouting at I'm you. I'm really thick. With, I, there's, there's I'm irritated times. how well, dumb that is. One that I can remember was when I was like 12. I realized that the United States of America was a bunch of states come together to make one country. I had a light bulb, but I was like, oh my god, that's what that name means. Because I just thought it was a name. Yeah, that's what that is. The United States is a bunch of states that make one country. Absolutely. That's how that works. United. Exactly. How about that? Uh, Stu Boulders. Are you worried about Tony Brown moving into the coaching role with the Springboks? Uh, he's a good, good, he's a good coach. smart attacking coach. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm worried, but I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see Schmitty shit all over him. Whoa! Schmitty. <laughs> Schmitty. Uh, no, I uh, I think hopefully because he's he's not. It's going to be interesting because he's known for his um, flair. Yeah. And, and a bit of like out of the box thinking. Yeah. You know, and like some really, really unique attacking plays and, and yeah, interesting stuff. Mm. And that perhaps is maybe what the South Africans have on the two time two in a row consecutive winners they could that's use what, the Birmingham two, yeah why not they got the weapons for it so they got the weapons for it so I think and one of the frustrating things watching them has been like you got these incredible talents can you please just give them a bit of pill with mm. a bit of space to play with and I think if he gets licensed to do that but if he's just told okay so our game plan is to put it up over and over and over again he'd be like oh, why, am I, why am I here for you know 
But um, is he on the downward slide though after his time in Japan? Yeah, or? I wonder if he and uh, Jamie Joseph didn't quite see eye to eye. I don't know because they've been like peas in a pod, thick as thieves for a long time. He was a good player. Yeah, they were together at the Highlanders, and then they with played. Japan. They played footy together. Yeah, as well. exactly. So don't know. Maybe just oh. had enough of each other. Yeah, has to happen one day. Jamie Batch. Oh, Would you guys be in favor of expanding the rugby championship to six teams following the Six Nations format? What teams do you think should be added? Japan and Fiji are the two that are often bandied about. Uh, off the top of my head. Would I be in favor of it? Um, what I like about it is if it goes to that many teams, you only need to play each team once. Yeah. And I feel like the rugby championship is not as dominated by the All Blacks if we only have to play each team once. Because we lose one game, then it we leaves, don't usually lose two. We leave the like, door it's, open. It's for pretty somebody. rare that like the Wallabies or the Box would do the double over us. Yeah. That's why I think the All Blacks have tended to, like in the years when it's the abridged version of the rugby championship, like 2019 and 2015, we lost. Yeah. Because they didn't have to do a double over us, you know what I mean? Hmm, hmm. So I think that could, like, if we had only one game away to the box, then yeah. You know. My fear about it though is the problem with the Six Nations is you've got one team that's clearly not as good as the other teams. Hmm. So the, <clears throat> having the Italy game is like your your effective freebie intense bye week mm. you know where you've got to have a big hit out but if you put in a, a half decent performance you are going to win because so you've got, you got you better players worry that happens with the rugby championship too many too many too many, too many Italy's you know like if you play well you should beat Japan so you think it comes Fra down you, to you should beat Japan Argentina and um, Fiji you know like if we if we we play well we beat Argentina mm. every day of the week um, so We've lost to them a couple of times. And I, uh, I think both times when we've played the reverse fixture, we've flogged them. Yeah. Yeah, because we've gone, shit, we're going to get our stuff together now. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, there's pros and cons to that one. Well, And then I've, I could be completely wrong and it does incredible things for the... Oh, I think, I think match, both, both Fiji and Japan could certainly use a higher level competition than they're getting now. Yeah, I'd say so. Mm. Maybe it's the right thing to do. I don't know. Probably the right thing to do. Oh, pardon me. There's a lot of money in Japan, not so much money in Fiji. Mm, this is true. More talent. April Tui. Maybe you've covered this somewhere else, but I only just found April out New Tui, Zealand. Your mate. New Zealand rugby sold off another slice to Silver Lake. Ooh. I vaguely remember reading about this. It's to cover. Because the last sale didn't increase revenue at all. Remember they tasked Silver Lake with um they gave them like the commercial arm or something that they were gonna Make us some more money. Make us some more. Make us some more money. Were you aware of this? What are your thoughts? How much will they sell off? Do you ever see the All Blacks being majority owned by a foreign investor? I think it's possible. Yeah. I'm struggling to f articulate an intelligent I response. feel like New Zealand rugby... <clears throat> okay, explain it to me like I'm a retard. Um, you don't allowed to say that word anymore. Don't. So New Zealand rugby is a New Zealand company. Yes. The NZR. But they sold off part of it to Silver Lake. Yes, yeah, I, I understand. I, I, I do understand and it. They're but they're going like, down that road a bit further. What are the what's uh, what's the worst case scenario? I guess that they keep selling up to try and get more money in, but then they relinquish more control, and then the All Blacks are essentially owned by a foreign company who treats so, them like a product. So they basically almost become like um, Team New Zealand in the America's Cup, yeah. where they don't even play the when we win yeah, the America's Cup. Yeah, they don't even play the regatta in New Zealand. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Where they're like, we got, <laughs> we got to take it to um, the Bledisloe Arab Cup, play it in Tokyo, the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could be shit. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. Yeah, I think they're trying to find out more ways to make some moolah, basically. Yeah. They are struggling a wee bit. They're trying to keep... When have they not been struggling? Someone else mentioned it, though. They're trying to keep, like, the NPC afloat. They have to kind of pump money into the Super Rugby and the All Blacks. And the All Blacks is their kind of flagship money maker. Everything else, I think, loses money. Yeah. Mm. Who would be a sports administrator, you know? Mm. Tough. Yeah, tough that, gig. Uh, tough gig. It really is. What do, you, what do you think happens to the NPC? Like, do we have an NPC in 10 years? It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a... 
it's lost public interest. It's lost ratings. It used to be. I think it's just there's too much rugby. I think I spoke to you about it one other time that like there used to be like eight games or something or ten games yeah. of rugby a year plus the All Blacks. That was it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. I would. I, I look. I love the Blues, and I really have enjoyed Super Rugby over the years. But I sometimes think, what would have it been like if we went onto this professional model where instead of going in franchises. We just stuck with our clubs, mm. and then you you were attached to that club that your dad had been attached to, your mm. parent, your family had been attached to, yeah. And you know, I was sitting there going, we hated each other because we mm. crossed down rivals, yeah, exactly. North Harbour, Auckland, yeah. You know, and then it's deeply rooted in everything. Yeah. You know, like for, for sure, that's definitely where Super Rugby lost a bit of its bite. And I've heard Welsh fans saying the same Auckland, thing happened because they were just like, hey. You know how you guys are geographically close to each other and play each other often and really hate each other and always want to beat each other because you probably sometimes see each other at work and shit? Now you guys are on the same team. <laughs> yeah. Yay. That's right. That's right. Like, because we hated Auckland yeah. growing up. We absolutely hated them. Yeah. You know, and people might think, think that's strange because I'm an Aucklander. But different but, part of Auckland. It's, yeah, that's what the Island. NRL does so yeah. well and the yeah. AFL. Yeah, 100%. And what the English Premiership does, you know, like City Cross and United. Cross-town rivals. Cross-town rivals. Exactly. The local derby is huge. Yep. The Battle of the Bridge is the one game the NPC I'll try and get, try and watch it. Yeah. For me, it was you Battle know. of the Bridge and Battle of the Bombays. Those were the two big ones. Yeah. So playing counties. Well, they're playing, playing Waikato. But counties is the Battle of the Bombays. Cal- maybe this is before counties. I don't remember. Counties used to be in the second division back in the day. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Counties, counties is the Bombays. Yeah, that's true. Bro, counties you didn't even look at them. You were like... They had Jonah for a while. They had Jonah. They had Joel even Derry. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. They had a, they had Tana back when he came back from France. Right. He coached them for a little that's bit. That's right. So he got his first coaching gig. Oh, yeah. Coached pretty well. Wow. Oh, there's one for Gaza. Oh, here we go. About Gaz's favorite commentators. A bit of Gaz and media coming up for you. So Let's someone asked it. who Gaz's favorite commentators are, and he picked to go with some of the Northern Hemisphere guys to talk about, and he says... Yeah, yeah, back again, McMurray. Well, the British guys, I remember uh, a guy named Bill McLaren. He was a famous Scottish commentator. Died not that long ago. He did British and European and new rugby for years. He was great, like Winston McCarthy. There was also Brian Moore from England, uh, Eddie Butler from Wales, Gareth Charles from Wales, a guy named Thomas Bell from uh, Ireland. Those are the five main ones I remember in Europe. It's pretty good. I can't remember the names of anyone. Bill McLaren is the the main guy. Oh, I yeah. just got a comment on my China saying, "Bad blogger in China." <laughs> Bad blogger in China. You're so butthurt about this. Oh, people keep giving me so much crap. Welcome to my world. It's just a nice, well, not a nice video. It's a video where I didn't have a great day. I didn't say the country yeah. sucked. I just said I didn't have a good day. People are like, how dare you? You said bad day in China. My worst trip in China. That's literally what it's called. My worst trip in China. This was my worst trip in China. You, but it could be construed as all my trips were so shit, but this one was the worst. I guess you have to watch the video to find out. Tell me if I'm being a prick. If you do see that video, tell me if I'm being a prick. The answer is yes. The answer is obviously yes. But yeah, Gaza, Gaza picked up. Bill McLaren is the main one. I, I can't remember. name any bloody. Bill McLaren is the guy who did the Jonah Lomu rugby commentary. Ah, oh. digs like a demented mole. Oh, really? yeah, that one. Oh, what if it's like that'll end up in the mm. something of one of the wards. That'll, like, that'll end up in ward four. Yeah, yeah, it's like I hope not, Bill. That's the maternity ward. Yeah, exactly. That game was a classic. Yeah, good stuff. It's a Gaddy Owen. That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the best rugby game we've ever had. I think it still holds up, man. It's still pretty. It's arcadey, but it's fun. Yeah, that's yeah. what you want. Exactly right. Rugby does not lend itself well to um, to, to video games. Com- not computer. really. It's not fluid enough in that nah. there's too many mini games within a game. Yeah, hundred percent. You have to make a mini game for the ruck, a mini game for the wall, a mini game for the line out. That's just have you ever played like have you ever yeah. played like the um track and field? Yeah. They suck too. Yeah. Circle square, circle square, They're circle square. Basically it is button bashes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. fast as you How do you posting. make the ruck like an entertaining game to play? It's either timing or button bashing. Yeah. It kinda sucks. Yeah, it kinda sucks. Football's great. Football is really good. It's fun to play. FIFA. 
That's sad. I mean, there's loads of questions. I'm sorry. This podcast is brought to you by FIFA 24. We, we didn't get some more questions. Someone did um, on Reddit say that they were the sponsor from, from the Long Dong Brewery. It and just wants uh, us to talk about You said he couldn't send. I was like, hold on. Here we go. I can't send you any beers. but uh, okay. well, You can't send us any beers. We're still drinking this Euro trash. Exactly. Mm. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your questions. I apologize if we didn't it. get to your one. We are a little bit. I really do appreciate time, all your questions, yeah, guys. Thank you so are, much. Um, we touched on a, a few ones that we didn't maybe mention directly. So cheers, guys, for planting those seeds in our brains. Plant those seeds, eh? Plant them hard. Into this bad blogger in China. Uh, rugby next week. What, what's happening in the well, world? Well, there's some Six Nations on. Woo! But more importantly, there's some Super Rugby. But <laughs> da 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 da. All right. Should we start with the big stuff, Super Rugby? All right. The Chiefs are playing the Crusaders. A barn burner to get us started. That's a rematch of last year's championship. I reckon the um, Chiefs will be sitting on that. Watch out for Shooter Stevenson to shoot the lights out. Um, the Chiefs. Is he playing? I don't think their preseason's been that good, but it's really hard to read too much into preseason. Yeah, preseasons. Form. Reading preseason form is just a lot. Uh, Rebels, Brumbies, and then Force Hurricanes. That's the Friday night games. Rebels, Brundi- Brumbies, and Force Hurricanes. So uh, the Force Brumbies. Hurricanes one is on at midnight, by the way, because oh. it's Perth time. So I go Chiefs, uh, Brumbies, and Hurricanes. Yeah, I think I probably concur. Yeah. Saturday is Blues Drua, but it's not at Eden Park. It's up in Northland. Oh. And then Highlanders, Moana Pacifica, and Reds, Waratah. So a uh, Queensland, New South Wales. I'll go Blues. Derby what was the next start. one, sorry? Uh, Highlanders, Moana Pacifica. The Highlanders have had a cracking preseason. They've been flogging everybody. Um, so go Highlanders, yep. And Reds Waratahs. That's probably the that's on a, paper that and the Chiefs Crusaders are the two like that's oh, origin that's hard to pick. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna go the Reds. Okay, new coach. I'm just really picking because I just well, I'm picking that because the Waratahs have been shit for quite a while. That's true. Yeah. And then the Six Nations. Ireland are playing Wales at home. They will beat Wales. Oh, you hit it here first. Hot yeah. take. That's a real hot take. That's a real hot take. Uh, Scotland are playing England. I think that's I think probably, too, probably the game of the round. Yeah, I think that's a, actually a really, England really fascinating game. What time two? are these bloody games? So, Super Rugby's on. And yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you can sit there and just there. have a beer. Do you, are you live streaming any? We can do. We could, do you want to do one? Yeah, we could do one. Okay. What do you want to do? Should we do the opener? Maybe Chiefs Crusade. I think that's like what 7.05 time? on Friday. All right, okay. Make sure Maddie's in bed. Okay. Get to bed! <laughs> oh, we can stay up till midnight yeah. and force hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Scotland, England is on at 5.45. Uh, if you want to get up for the early one, Ireland, Wales, that's 3.15 in the morning. <sighs> This is why what's these, the, what's this the, why we complain about the times. And that's why there's not that much interest in the premiership and URC and shit. Because this is just time, dumb. Time zones are hard. Um, and uh, what's the Monday morning game? The so? Monday morning is France, Italy, four a.m. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be up for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna struggle to watch a highlight of that. France have been struggling a little bit. Uh, they had to kind of meander past Scotland and lost the opener. So this is the time for Italy to get them. Is that what you're saying? You heard it here first. Home. Italy win from Two Cents Rugby. Yeah, no, probably put not. Him, put them down. Put them down. Okay, well, that's some real code to come up this weekend. I think Scotland, if you're going to watch two games of rugby this weekend, you I'm, watch Scotland, England, and you watch Chiefs Crusaders. I agree. Those are two big games. Please watch some Super Rugby. Yeah, come watch it. It doesn't suck as much as you think it might. Just between you, me, and the people on this other side of the camera. On the internet. I'm going to be doing a few videos for Super Rugby on behalf of New Zealand. Well, NZR Plus. Mm, mm. So, and just between uh, me, you, and so please those watch other them. people. I won't be part of those videos. So. <laughs> But yeah. I haven't got the old shoulder tap from NZR yet, they'll, they'll, believe they'll it or the, not. They'll be the team reaction yeah. video, so please please watch them. Yeah. <laughs> Are you worried that they're like they're contacting you and they're going like, to Like, wow, this guy's World Cup numbers were fantastic. If we can get even half of that for Super Rugby, we'll be doing fine. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Please um, watch. Yeah. 
Super Rugby is genuinely an entertaining competition. Oh, it's a great, it's a cracker of an opportun- opportunity. Cracker of a game. Cracker yeah. of the cracker of a tournament. Sorry, I'm still on meds, guys. Give me a break. Give me a break. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm. I, I. I do look forward to it. I like. It, I don't well, actually. Do I look forward to it? I, it comes up. It's like the week of. I'm like someone's like it's on this weekend. I'm like oh yeah, awesome. Nice. Yeah, okay. that's good news. And it's I like think finding ten bucks in your pocket. Yeah, and I think oh Friday night I can watch some footy. You know, that's good. I'm stoked. You know, and then there's this there's this little golden period where like the Aussies are coming over for a test series. There's rugby on, where they're still primo. I think it's, it's good the, time to be alive. What it's up to be alive. Yeah, and what a time to listen or watch a podcast called Two Cents. Gets distracted, a rugby podcast. There you go. Which you can find where, Mark? Spotify. I Heart Radio. Uh, I Heart Radio is all over the world? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Sounds kind of like a cheap New Zealand name, like, you know, <laughs> how we get like kind of crappy names for stuff uh, over here. I Heart Bodies or something. <laughs> I don't know. Just okay. Doesn't, doesn't sound that flash. You no, know, I think I Heart Radio is a national brand. Okay. Uh, Apple. Apple Podcasts, Google and, um, Podcasts, yeah, and that's not it. on Stitcher. And then anywhere else you get your podcasts, we'll be there. Wherever you want to get it, we'll, we'll, give, we'll support you for we'll it. We'll give it to you hard. He'll, he'll take the front end, I'll take the back end. There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's why right. we're here. <laughs> Abusing your ears. Get on your Thank mug. you, Tony. Hope you I am, I am. I'm feeling, I'm feeling tired, but I'm feeling good. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Hot it up. Thank you.